So we're ready. Okay. So good morning, everyone. Thank you for coming, and thank the organizers to let me talk here. Uh, the talk today will be will be about a bit more uh, than what the title said on the program. I mean, like not only PHP 7, but also which alternatives we have uh, to work with PHP, or which solutions we have now already to speed up uh, your PHP installation. Uh, <coughs> shortly, uh, my name is Pierre uh, Joye, or Joa, depending on which side of the Atlantic you are coming from. You can contact me on Twitter, email, you can try, but Arian can, if you ask Arian, he knows that I'm very slow to answer emails, so Twitter or IRC, you can reach me out. I don't, don't hesitate to, if you have questions, interrupt me anytime. And the first thing I would like to do first is I like to, I like statistics. So I will ask you a couple of questions. The so first of all is just to get an idea, who uses PHP? <laughs> you don't? <laughs> okay, so, and um, who uses uh, Linux? Okay, Wi Windows too, from time to time. Yeah, we talk about that, okay. Who uses cloud services already? Like Amazon, <laughs> Amazon, Asia? You have some job to do. And other, other cloud services like Workspace or what do you use? Linux. Okay. And uh, who already contributed something to PHP? Okay, so I, I will have some job to do as well later. <laughs> <clears throat> because I try always to get people contribute to the PHP itself. And, or, and who, use, who contributes something to an open source project it did not create? Okay, that's already better. <laughs> so, uh, the first part I would like, would like to talk about is what's going on in the PHP world, I mean, from a core point of view. Uh, and the first thing is, oh, I forgot to ask a question which will bring me to the next slide. Uh, which PHP version do you use? So, let's begin with a joke, PHP 4. That's better, I gave a talk in Bangkok two weeks ago, so I was still PHP 4 user, so <laughs> PHP 5.1, 5.2, Okay, you will get an issue right, right now, I will talk about that later. <laughs> 5.4, 5.5, someone using 5.6 already? Okay, so the first thing is PHP 5.3 is dead, so Better have to, to even even distribution switch now. They upgrade everything to to five four, so you better have to update as soon as you can. It's on the cards. <laughs> okay, and the thing is pretty much uh, hundred percent compatible. I mean, uh, if your code is clean, I suppose it is. <laughs> Should be works it works fine. The second thing is PHP five four is in security fixes mode only. That means. There is no bug fixing anymore, except if there are critical security issues. Next year, it will be dead as well. This is something uh, I will shortly talk about, not too long because the time is running, but this is something, uh, hang on, um, just make my timer here. Yeah. And uh, the, something we introduced a couple of years ago when we released 5.3. Uh, we have now a fixed release cycle, so it's very easy to plan or manage you how you want to, to migrate to a new version and so on. And as I said, PHP 5.6 is out, 5.6.1 or now 5.6.2 is also out. And you, I, also, I can only strongly recommend to upgrade. The main vision is you get free performance improvement without doing... Okay. Without doing anything, sorry for the interruption, without doing anything in your code, I mean, like for 5.3 to 5.4, there are like 20% performance improvement. And for from uh, 5.4 to 5.5, also 25% performance improvement for anything you use with PHP. So you just upgrade and you got improvement without doing anything in your code. Plus, 5.5 is an upcode up cache included. Who knows what is an upcode cache is, or who does not know? It's a caching system for the bytecode in PHP, so you don't, PHP doesn't have to... Uh, I will just put... 
It's uh, something like PHP compiles your script, converts them to bytecode for, for the PHP engine, and it does that on every request. The opcode cache simply caches that, so it doesn't have to compile it, compile your script again and again on every request. So is that the same as APC, or is it similar? Oh, APC is an opcode cache. The only di okay. No, I know why the HTML, HTML adapter. I will just. Is it coming out? Or? The main reason to answer your question was <coughs> APC. The, main, the problem we had is like, it's like in PHP itself. We have very few people working on that, and we have no one having enough time to, to do the port of APC to 5.4 and 5.5. So we decided then ask if we like to bundle up cache, it, which is based on the Zend Z optimizer. So now it's included in the core, so any change done in the engine will, de, will be done automatically in the opcode cache as well. So we have no more issue like you have a new PHP version, but you have no opcode op 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 cache available for it. So it just solves this issue. The, only, the main difference, you don't have a user cache, like what you have in AP APC to, to do per host local memory caching. But you, ca you have other solutions like APCU or other tools to do that, or op cache on, uh, win cache on Windows and so on. So now, the first thing about what's going on is the next version after PHP 5 will be PHP 7. For those interested why in the PHP world 5 plus 1 means 7, I will let you read uh, the PHP internal mailing list. We have an IFC about that. Because we attempt a couple of years ago to do a PHP 6 version, which miserably failed. So we decided that, OK, don't use 6 anymore, we, we switch uh, directly to, to 7. Uh, the roadmap, <coughs> part of it is already done. We, the engine, what I was to, referring to before, has been totally revamped. It's a, basically a new engine, which brings a lot of, of performance improvement. We have now um, the 64-bit support. Portable. Before it was a kind of a changing, depending on which platform you are, you don't have 64-bit support for integer or for large files and so on and so on. So we try now to make that portable. Uh, we tested it on uh, Linux, BSD, Solaris and Windows. If you use a platform, please test, report bugs, we will be happy to fix it. And uh, my team is working on that, so if you have question or whatever, you can, you can uh, just uh, ping me. And that means also large string and uh, large file support. Doesn't mean you have to read a full Blu-ray disk and memory, but you can still work with offset and so on in a better way. And uh, <coughs> if you, you, I mean, you all use PHP, you know what a mess it could be to, with the various variable syntax, with the brackets or without the brackets, and how it behaves and so on and so on. We try it now to make that come more consistent. And I don't go into the details, but you can check out uh, the IFC about it, and you will see which kind of change uh, will happen. A couple of compatibility issues may, may happen in, uh, in PHP 7, but it could be pretty much the same or 100% compatible with the other version, only easier to remember, and so on. And uh, what thing is very cool is, do you know what I mean with no fatal error when you call a method? Who does not know? Or who knows? What is it? It's a great in it. It's vital. Mm -hmm, exactly. So now you have the possibility uh, to have a recoverable, recoverable error or an exception, which means if you have dynamic object and so on, your application just don't die on you anymore, which is pretty nice <laughs> from a user point of view. Uh, you have the new operator. And there are many, many other features uh, being under discussion, like annotation support. Who knows what? Is, who does not know what annotation are? Everyone use know what knows that? No. Uh, it's a kind of metadata support for method and object. Uh, you have that, for example, if you use Symfony or Doctrine, it's a or ORM. You can define like, oh, I got an integer, and this fun this parameter will instance an, uh, an object from this class, and so on and so on. You can define some permission. It's basically based on what we have on C Sharp, which has a huge, uh, massive, a very good uh, annotation support, because it also helps from a refactoring point of view. 
because you perfectly know how it will behave and so on. It's not about magic changing the way your metal will behave, but you can add many, many kind of information which are not available directly using arguments and so on. I don't know what I do, but okay. And um, he doesn't like me today. So uh, now some example. This is what you get, basically. Uh, now only do a var dump, but you can simply throw an exception or your you standard uh, error uh, systems, what you used to do with, uh, with, this kind, with the error handler. So I think it's pretty easy to understand. Or do we have question? No, I think. Yeah. Uh, the collapse, the call, call as operator. This is something I pretty much like. It's, it's a, syn a syntactic sugar. But it makes the code much more readable. I think it's self-explaining. I don't have to explain that the, the new operator is easier to read. Um, yes? I'm just looking at what it's doing. Oh, so what, it, what does it do? Yeah. I'll ask you. No, I'll ask you. <laughs> no, the thing, do you know the normal uh, operator, the integration point uh, with, the, with, the, with the colon? So what it does now is, uh, if the, for example, if the get, the get user index is not set, it will assign the value nobody to the username variable. Okay. So you don't have to do if set and is null or not integer and, 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 and so on. And uh, <coughs> so that's pretty much easier to, to write or to read. Once we know what it does, <laughs> indeed. So, and uh, you can chain it as well, which is a very like a long set of if or, or bracket and so on. I did nothing this time. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was a bird. I, I, I think there was a bird last night in my singing the whole night. I don't know what the name it is, but it was like a quee, quee, quee the whole night. <laughs> so, come on, guy. Okay. I think you will have some work to, to work on on the video. <laughs> OK, and one big, big thing we have uh, and is this is something we, uh, we have been talking about since many, many years. And the Facebook team stepped in. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's, uh, Give me one minute because I think it will be a mess if it keeps going on like that. And I won't touch the desk anymore except the keyboard. <coughs> okay, so what I was talking about is we finally have a full specification of the language, or almost full. The Facebook team who works on HHVM, who knows what HHVM is? OK, HHVM, I will talk about that in the second part. It's an alternative engine for PHP uh, implemented by Facebook. And indeed, for Facebook, at some point, it was interesting or easier to say, we have to have a specification to know what PHP does, in which situation, which kind of errors for the syntax, and so on, so we can work uh, easily together or write tests, and so on. And there are quite a lot now. I think they have 50 people working on HHVM. And f from testing to like two guys wrote that the base of the specification. And as you see, uh, one of the big things about PHP, not only that, for who, who do, does not know that, we are on GitHub. Oh, we moved to Git. So you can do now, you can use Git, GitHub, do pull request, be for the PHP core, and uh, right. I think we can forget the deck. <laughs> and uh, you can do your contributions there, including for the specification. That means uh, if you like to, do, to give something back to PHP and you know PHP very well because you use it since many years and so on, feel free to, to go, on, uh, do go on there and uh, submit some, uh, some new change or part are missing and so on. And what does it mean for PHP? If we have a public specification and it's open, we have more competition. 
And competition, especially in open source, is always a good thing. That means we don't have, if you use PHP, you don't have now to, to use only the PHP.NET version. We have many, many other versions. It's like flowing like the frameworks. We have uh, almost one, one every week. So <coughs> competition means clones. It's supposed to be a joke now, but uh, with a delay, <laughs> it will be. I'm very sorry about that, but. Yeah, I know, but I'm losing my screen too, so I have to, okay. So I will do it this way. And let me check, I will just switch the screen and do one screen only. Give me one second because it, it won't work. No, it doesn't look like that. <clears throat> so, and uh, what we have now is we have many, many, comp many competitions. That means many clones of PHP. And most of them focus on speed. Now, what is speed? It's a matter of definition, but most of the new implementation, especially like, it was the main goal for HHVM is to say, okay, PHP is too slow. We have to do a new solution to speed up PHP. Now, the question is, do we, are we all, do we all have the same use case than Facebook? I'm not sure, but this is mainly the, the focus we have now. The thing is, in web application, and I think many of us will agree, it's not really about how fast is PHP or Python or Ruby? It's mostly about the network and so on. I mean, like, oh, now we are good. And this PC is hard enough and <laughs> seems to be strong. <laughs> so the main issue is that, I mean, for every web application, but uh, this is more about your architecture, networking, how you scale your whole application and so on. But today I won't focus on that. As everyone else, I will focus only on the speed part. So that means, it doesn't mean because PHP is faster that you can scale your application as much as you like, you won't. And the speed is what the user see. That means you and user on the browser side, how fast you, you will load the page, or how fast your, applic your mobile application will react, and so on and so on. This is the user experience. And scale is all about what you have on server sites, like CDN, or you, you Amazon, or Azure, and so on and so on. My code, I don't use PHP a lot, so my code anyway is bad. I'm pretty much sure that most of yours as well. <laughs> <laughs> so the main goal in general to improve PHP speed or to improve how PHP is, or it's the same for Python or Ruby. There is some hopeless languages where you cannot improve things, but I won't talk about them. <laughs> but uh, is improve your code. I mean. Just improving your code, bring it to the, up to the newest version and so on. Up, do the upgrades, like not sticking to dead, to dead codes and so on, will help a lot to speed up PHP. Because the engine works better with modern <coughs> code and, and so on and so on. And uh, so, what do we have? The first project I would like to talk about is, um, it's about QB. Who knows QB? Or who does not know, know QB? Okay, nobody. So, that's what I thought. Nobody knows it. I tried to tweet about it, everyone, but it's a, it's a very, very interesting tool. And the point is, this is how it works. As you can see, you have a little comment, which may look like an annotation, for example. It just tells uh, uh, the QB extension, because it's basically only one single extension. You can enable it on Windows, Linux, just add it to your PHP ini, and you have it. So you just say to the, to the QB extension, which has is its own engine, like the, the, the Zen engine or the PHP engine, it just tells, okay, this parameter will be an integer 32 bit, or this one will be a double. This expression, you can use expression as well. It just tells which kind of type it, it has to use, which allow, uh, that allow it to do a better compilation 
to, to run in inside the engine or inside the QB virtual machine, which is a little bit faster than the PHP one because it's very specific for a couple of things. Now, the best part of it is in implemented now uh, QBVM to native code. That means, let's say you have a function doing some statistics or data processing or image processing or whatever you need. You can speed it up, add what you want, and this function, a specific function, in this case calculate, will be executed in natively. That means, just like if you have written it in C or Assembler, compile it and call it from PHP. And that can bring you a lot of performance improvement, especially if I don't know if some of you work in, uh, with big data, but doing many things in PHP or financial systems, when you have to do a lot of calculation or business processing in PHP itself, it is something that could help a lot. <clears throat> this is something like uh, for image processing, could be more complex, as you can see, you can also process like always, if you get a, a raw data, you can tell him it's a pointer or floating point 30 bit, 32 bit, for example. And QB will know that exactly and do the conversion on its own. So you don't have to do pack and pack and so on yourself. So that could be something pretty interesting. This is quite a complex example, but uh, it's actually, I do the GD library for graphics. I implemented some of the filter he shows that, exa for example, some of the filters he did using QB and PHP are even faster than what we do directly in C using GCC. It's not, like, it's not on faster than on Windows because on Windows we also use uh, PGO, or Profile Guided Optimization. That means it's a multi-pass optimization and so on, so it's hard to be faster than that. But it matches that pretty, pretty well. I will show some benchmark comparing that to PHP 5.6, PHP 7, or HHVM. This is something, and the good point is you don't have to change a lot your code. You don't have to change what you know already in your architecture. That means you don't have to deploy, to deploy a new PHP that you have no idea how it works. You don't know how to debug it and so on. It's just a simple extension and some comments in your code where you need it. All the links are at the end of the deck, so you can take, wait, yes? Um, if you don't have a QB extension, presumably it just runs as normal. It's a, it's, a, it's a comment. It's a comment in the code, so it, the, the comment will just be ignored. That's a good part of it. So if you don't have it locally, or you deploy to a customer who does not have it, it just works. It does, does not cost, cost too much to do this modification in the code. I mean, compared to changing PHP or whatever you need. Any question until now? Or, yeah. What if you mess up one of these um, the type definitions? If you mess it up? Yeah, so, so you, uh, you have some warning or one declaration. So you can, you can get uh, to know uh, what's going on and so on. And I think, <coughs> excuse me, uh, we are talking now for PHP 7 to add annotation support and so on, which may simplify that. So we can have a better error handling for that. Yeah. But if you mess it up, that means you didn't test your code and you deploy without testing. Bad boy. <laughs> so, yeah. It is static. At runtime? At, uh, at runtime, yeah. Because what it does is, I just go back to uh, one script. <clears throat> oh, I, don't, I, I cannot move, but because <laughs> I, I can move now, okay. Ah, finally I'm free. <laughs> so what it does is first it compiles the, the, the command to know what your script is going to do, which kind of variables it will need and so on at runtime. Because all, this, all that, as I said before, PHP will compile it, compile it get a comment, and you can access, access the, comment, uh, the comment using the API. Like you have the, uh, the PHP API to, to just get, like, get comment and so on with reflection and, and so on. And QB will pass this part, which is right before the function, define what it will, and then it will call the, en the engine to know which byte code are used and it will convert the, bat, the, the Zen bytecode to QB at runtime, and then execute it if you like to, or if you enable for the just-in-time compilation, it will just do the just-in-time compilation as well. That means PHP bytecode to QB bytecode to native code. So if you pass a float to input, is that a compile error or a cast or a runtime error? It will, 
PHP will remain the same as before. Just casting. Just casting, yeah. That's something that may change in PHP 7. 7 we are talking about adding uh, typing thing for Scala. So you may define float something and so on. But it will do the cast. So if you give a string with a custom string inside, which has nothing to do with a, a float, your calculation may be wrong. <laughs> but that's, a, that's the same now. So the, we ran the test using the full PHP test suite and did some, uh, some optimization for some tests. We didn't see any, any change in the runtime. So it's a pretty easy step to, to speed up your PHP. <coughs> and this is another example. And this is a comparison. Uh, I will let you use Wikipedia for the function what you was using here to compare. But this, the first test is, I'm moving a bit. <laughs> this is HHVM. So I will talk about it later. That's what uh, uh, Facebook did for their own use and then open source it, which was supposed to be the fastest, fastest and fastest implementation of PHP. This is QB where in green the spectral, spectral norm and body or Fanco Redux, Redux. Oh, I don't know how you say it in English, but it's a German name, so I say it this way. And you, as you can see, uh, this is interpreted. That means only you running inside the QB engine. And this is a compiled version. That means from engine to, engine to native code. So as you can see, one of the best examples is the red line as the end body. OK, let's forget PHP for a second. <laughs> but compared to HHVM, which is supposed to be the fastest, we have quite, quite a big improvement. Now, the only problem we have, uh, QB has now is it does function level optimization. That means what is inside a function. But it is very bad, or it does not do anything at all for function calls. And one of the main bottleneck in PHP is how slow the function calls are. So when you do a spectral norm, you have to call the function recursively. That means every call will, sl will be slow. And that's where HHVM is very good, because everything is compiled to C or to natively. That means even the function call will be faster, because it will be a C native call, a jump, so to say. But for everything else, if you, if you, will, if you will take you a simple method or function, this is the improvement you will get from PHP to QB, only by adding a couple of comments and an extension. Uh, any questions so far, still? Or, yeah. yeah? I have a question about QB. Does, how does it handle uh, code that's generated during runtime? It does not. It doesn't? OK, that's us. Thank you. <laughs> I mean. If I may say, I'm not a big fan of generating code at runtime. I mean, like using eval and stuff like that. So, but if you generate a PHP file, yeah, generating PHP file. so you don't generate code at, at runtime. Okay. You don't. I mean, so do, do those PHP files you do it on, I mean, theory, in theory, you do it, but practically you don't. Because you generate a file and you load it with PHP. That means it will just work. Because you just load a PHP script with include or require. Yeah. So that means your script will be, co will be compiled through the engine, then goes through the QB extension, and it just works like that. But does not work, or it may work, but you have to generate the command as well. You I never tested it, because I never use eval. Who use eval now? Not about <laughs> OK, we just wanted to be sure. But in, besides that, you just generate the command as well. So everything else is a standard. PHP script being loaded by the engine. Yeah. Sorry? So theoretically, it should be just out of the Even way. practically, I mean, yeah. it's, it works. It should be fine. It doesn't make no difference. Was there a question until now? How much time do I have? Because all, all this mess, I don't know. 15? OK. So we'll speed up a bit. The other one, uh, which is quite different, is Zephyr. Who knows Zephyr? OK, so we'll spend a bit of time on it. When you have a complex, more complex things that you cannot simply optimize within a function or a method, you may need, OK, let's do an extension. For example, back then we needed an extension for graphics because you cannot do everything in PHP. We have a GD. Or 
for zip or OpenSSL and so on. Those are the kind of things you cannot do within PHP or the hash extension, which is all the hashing algorithm implemented there. You can do it in PHP, but the performance may not be that good. So at some point you need, okay, you have a hash piece of code that you have to, to optimize. And that's, if you don't know C or your team does not know C or you don't have the resources or the time because debugging C or maintaining a C extension or maintaining something in PHP or something similar to PHP, it's much more hard. Who knows C or C++? What do you think about developing in C and PHP? What is easier? <laughs> I have to agree because I do C only, but you may be the exception here for what for the other. You? Yeah. Okay, we are all C fans, so I have to ask someone else. But basically, I mean, if you debug, uh, if you, I mean, if you have a memory leak or random crash after 10 minutes or 10 days, it's somehow easier to do it in PHP than in C. I mean, we all agree on that, but I, I agree with you. The lower level I am, the, the happier I am too. So, but <coughs> I'm not about <laughs> to talk about that here. So, we have something called Zephyr. Uh, what does Zephyr is? It's a kind of a new language, very close to PHP, with a couple of other things like in QB, like static type typing and so on. And it, what he does is he optimizes the code, do a code generation to C and also uh, other part, <coughs> and you, he does a compilation or optimization. So this part, the second step, the first step is done by the Zephyr tool. The second step is what you use. It could be GCC on, uh, on Linux or the platform, or Visual C on, uh, on Windows, and so on. And all the optimization you can have with these compilers. And then you have a native execution with a standard normal extension. <coughs> this is, for example, a ex uh, simple extension. You have a, a, a filter for a string. I think the code is, I mean, it's not PHP, but I think everyone understands it. What does it do? Yeah, okay, it's the first talk this morning. So just filtering some string. And this is, uh, as you can see, it's pretty close to PHP with some mix of Java or C++ if you know it for the type. And this is how you write an extension. You can define class, function, even namespaces and so on. So, and you can have pretty much very large complex extension because you can do, you can have multiple files, <coughs> You can add all your whole business logics moving there and so on. And that's, this is how you use it. That means just like you use, for example, a PDO or XML reader or whiter ex, uh, uh, class extension and so on. So it's from a PHP point of view, it's pretty much the same as using an, a new extension from Pickle or GitHub and so on. Only problem is it's a new language. But if speed is an issue in your application, that's something you may consider as well. And uh, at the same time, we have alternative implementation. I want, now, I listed PHP 7 here now as an alternative because it's not now stable, it, and, uh, but it should be uh, in, the, in the next couple of, uh, in one, one year. HHVM, uh, I think, as Skip the part of HHVM, so I will come back uh, while moving with the slide and so on. And WikiCT, oh yeah, I totally missed this part. I switched too much. Ah, here we go. And Phalanger, which is uh, WikiCT, it's a uh, PHP. It's something like HHVM, but un entirely written in PHP. So if you like to contribute, you can contribute too. And uh, you, it's a very interesting project. It's a very new, very fresh, like a couple of months, but very interesting project. And Phalanger, which is a PHP implementation based for, uh, on, .NET, on the .NET engine. So if you are on Windows platform and so on, it could be in interesting because you have access all what you do in .NET, calling classes and so on, you do it directly in PHP, just like you do, you do in, in .NET and so on. So WikiCT, which is, I mean, it's a kind of a toy right now, but uh, could be very interesting. 
Uh, this is how it works. I will speed up a bit. Uh, if you have question about how it works, the caching is pretty much what we know about caching on opcode, what we said before. Uh, the parser, inter ER, it's an intermediate representation. That means it will parse PHP, do an intermediate stage to represent how you, uh, what your script is. Like if you know uh, LLVM or compiler theory in general, you, you will know what I mean. And then it does a just-in-time compilation using the tool, the usual tool, GCC, VC, or whatever you need. And then it executes the code natively. The only problem now, uh, because it's new, it doesn't, does, doesn't do that at runtime. You have to do it before. That means you, it's, you have to call the command line, and it will compile the PHP, and so on, and so on. So it's not as flexible as what you do with a normal PHP, where you just deploy, deploy your PHP script and run then on, on your servers. This is, uh, as you can see, well, uh, the fail it doesn't work, but WikiCT is a ta taken as a base reference. So as you can see, it could be pretty fast, even faster than HHVM or QB. And this is very interesting because I think at some point, this project could be very, very good if we manage, and could be possible with PHP 7, if we manage to get it, do this job at one time. Because it works with a, do you, do you know a lib just in time, which is a just in time compiler library, which is used for many, many projects like Mono and so on, uh, also for JavaScript engine and so on. So what it does is it just takes a PHP script, converts into multi language, and, yes, and then use GIT to convert to native code. And if we manage to do that at one time, like, I mean, on the server directly, that could be pretty interesting because the performance are very, very good. And as I said, if you like to have some fun working with compilers and so on, it's open source, it's on GitHub, the links are at the end of the deck. And someone is looking, for example, to do a PHP to JavaScript uh, converter, just using that as well. So because you can use different backends, this one you see, or just in time, but you can, uh, GIT, but you can use all the backend. And as JavaScript already has uh, just in time compilers optimization, you can do that, or doing, doing to Go, or whatever language you use. Pretty interesting project. And all the example I will see, HHVM. A uh, bit more complex, so the idea, I will summarize uh, what HHVM does. The first version was pretty much the same as WikiCity. You have to use a command line, like a compiler, compile a, a full package of your PHP application. It will do one big exe, including the web server. That means you, you cannot use another web server like NGX or Apache or whatever. You, you had to use the HHVM web server, which was a kind of issue, including security, deployment, and so on. And that's why no, not, not many people was using it. But in the latest version, which was sweet, or since HHVM 3.2 or 3.1, they include a fast CGI support. Everyone knows what, what fast CGI is, I suppose. I hope so. Okay, so that means you can use now HHVM with NGX, Apache, and so on. Someone is a, uh, we are trying to, to help them too, and uh, Elizabeth Smith is working on a Windows port too. That means you can, in, at some point, you can use it on IES as well, or Azure, or whatever. So that it became a very, very interesting solution. And like the question about runtime or before, it, it means what they did now, it is exactly the same as what you do now. You take your PHP script or PHP application, you upload to the server, and HHVM will do its job. What you may see, <coughs> and that's a difference, between, the, difference, the big difference between QB or HHVM or what we have with the PHP 7, is HHVM needs to know what he has to optimize. That means it will take some time. Like the lapse between a standard PHP and HHVM actually running full optimized will may take like a couple of minutes on your web server because it will just let some requests came in, analyze them, profile them, see, oh, this is the part, this part is slow, I have to compile it first, this part I have to optimize, and it takes time because you cannot do it with five requests, especially for big application. So when you, if you use HHVM, think about it, the warm up is very important because you may have some issue if you do an update, at some point your server will 
go down because he has to do the compilation and uh, you have a, a huge load, but the servers may not be as fast as they used to be uh, right before the, the update. And now for PHP, uh, pretty much simpler. So PHP just compile your script to a bytecode, and if you have the opcache enabled, it will cache it and run it. Uh, in PHP 7, uh, I will let you take, or you can ask me later, you have an IST parser, which allows a lot of uh, good things to do, optimization or multi-phases optimization, like, well, like what we do for, uh, on Windows with the profile guide optimization and so on. So it could be something that could bring a lot of new optimization, because <coughs> uh, I went quickly before, but PHP 7 now, in many, many cases, are faster or as fast as HHVM. And we don't do any kind of just-in-time uh, optimization. Okay, it's a benchmark, and as you know, every benchmark is wrong. So, but still, it's a good, it's a good step forward. And we are in very early, st early stage of development. It's like three months old now. So until we are done with all the optimization, stabilization, and so on, we may, and HHVM is working on it too, so <laughs> it's a kind of, a very good thing for uh, to see what will go on in the next couple of months. So this is a little comparison. Uh, this is using the standard, if you install WordPress, five minutes? Okay, thank you. Uh, if you install uh, five uh, WordPress and you get the, the standard WordPress homepage, which is quite heavy for a standard uh, homepage, this is what uh, I get, for example, on my laptop over there. And uh, obviously, as you can see, it's getting pretty much pretty, very interesting. If you use 5.6, you get around 36 requests per second with the opcatch, if you, if you use PHP 5.6, so just for the reference. And PHP 7, it was uh, <coughs> last month, 40, 41, and HHVM, 40, uh, 57. And it used, I, I made the warm up, that means I didn't take the first numbers, I, I run it like 10 minutes empty, running 1,000 requests per second. And after 10 minutes, I take the last five minutes, the last 10,000 requests and to, do, to get the mean value. So it's not like taking the warm up in the, in the number because it will be much lower, even lower than PHP 5.5 on opcache. So as you can see, many things are going on. So. I will take the five minutes. Uh, one thing before I'm done, and if you have question, is the main thing is, as I said in the beginning of the talk, is take care of how you do it, because now you have a known environment. That means you use PHP, you know how to debug it, you know how to deploy, you know everything. Moving to another implementation, I do that for a couple of projects. I do some tests. Uh, uh, as well in my team for the OSTC, which is the Open Source Tech Center. Uh, if you're interested in that, I will talk about that tomorrow. But uh, it's quite a hard step to teach my team or to teach new people or the sysadmin, all the DevOps part. Okay, now it's a new tool, this is how it works, the configuration, know it, and so on. And if you have a big application or many, many customers, could take some time and some headaches as well. So it's not an easy step, step. maybe do it more closely, step by step, maybe using QB first and slowly uh, moving around. And the second part, which I, it's not a political statement because I, I very much like what uh, the Facebook team does, but it is owned by Facebook. That means they can just say, we stop now because we use something else. And finding people able to first uh, no C++ good enough to take over it. It's not, it's not like they are running around and you can find them. The second part is knowing the compiler stuff, compilers, parser, and so on. So that means if they say at some point, we don't need it, and they did that for a couple of projects at XHProf, which is, a profiler, which is a profiler for PHP. For me, it was easy, we just forked it with uh, Fabien, Fabien Potentier from the Symfony project. We just took it over because it was a simple PHP extension and I know very well PHP, I do that since more than 15 years. But if you ask me now to take over HHVM, I will just run away and say, hey, do it on your own because it's something totally different. So that, as a kind of thing, I'm trying to get some info from Facebook uh, to say, okay, what is your roadmap? 
Do you plan to do it for the next five years? Or can you guarantee that you will maintain it for five years minimum? Or stuff like that. So that's the kind of things. Uh, I don't, OK, you can always roll back, say, oh, they don't do it anymore. I move back to PHP. But for some customers, when you have very strong specifications, I work for insurances or banks, for example, I have to set up a fixed setup for three, four, five years, saying, this is the PHP version I will use, this is the database I will use, and so on and so on. And if the middle of the contract, you just lose or lost one of the tool, you have to take care of it on your own. So it could be something you have to take care about. But all in all, very interesting time. I mean. PHP is not as slow or as, uh, I mean, from a development process and so on, it's, things are going fast because we have now also, since the IFC process, we have every, every year we have a new release, like 5.4 was three years ago, 5.5 five last year, 5.6 this year, 5.7 or PHP 7 next year or both. So things are moving pretty, uh, pretty fast now. Any question? Because I think I'm out of time. If any, in any case, I will be around until Friday, so. Okay, so, yeah, thank you very much. Thank you very much.